Okay, so now let's look at the one demonstrations um, on the function on scalar regression model. So again, here we are using the weather examples. Um, so basically, we want to look at uh, how the uh, the re how the regional effect on the uh, thirty five temperature curves. Okay, so again, uh, we were using the uh, FDA library. So in FDA library, uh, they have the Canadian weather data built there, and uh, so uh, so you can find the regional informations. So uh, so we have thirty five uh, cities, and uh, you can find their regions is this uh, four regions: Atlantic, Continental, Pacific, and Arctic. Okay, uh, and then you can. Uh, find out uh, uh, how many cities in each regions. So, for example, for Atlantic, there's uh, 15 cities, okay, and you can do the same things on uh, all other, um, all, all other uh, three regions, okay. So then I plot uh, the this is 35 uh, weather curves uh, using the using the uh, color to represent the uh, the region okay uh, so this uh, graph I'll already show you in our uh, lectures uh, so so then uh, let me see So then you basically you will build a region list on the on the thirty five cities, okay. Um, so you transfer the region um, to be. Let me see. Oh, so here, uh, because you have uh, uh, four regions, right? So basically here, you will create uh, five scalar, co scalar covariates. So the first covariate will be always equal to one, right? Will be kind of looks like the, the first uh, column, right? And the second column will be always... Uh, equal to 1 if you belong to the uh, Atlantic regions and uh, we could equal to 0 if not belong to Atlantic region right this is uh, very similar when we do the ANOVA uh, mo models okay uh, so so for this uh, region list um, basically it's uh, uh, 5 a list of 5 uh, columns and each column represents the um, so the first column will be always equal to one, right? And and the rest will be uh, if equal to the region, it will be equal to one. If not belong to the region, it will be equal to zero. Okay. So then um, we will um, again here because uh, um, for our temperature data is periodic, therefore we are using the harmonic dif differential operator. To define this uh, uh, penalty, um, so we're using uh, 65 uh, free basis functions, and we're using lambda equal to uh, 10 to 6. So it's pretty, pretty smooth estimation. Uh, so we can plot the. Um, we first smooth the data. Uh, so this is the. This is the temperature data we have, so it's a pretty uh, smooth the estimation. Okay. Uh, so, so then we need to add, uh, as we mentioned in our um, lectures, we need to add the 36 observations with the response equal to zero, right? 
just be because of the uh, the constraints that uh, the summation of the uh, alpha j j of t should be equal to zero, right? We were adding a adding a response uh, zero here. Um, so let me see. So basically, the x is equal to zero all the time. So what we can do is uh, we will define the, a vector of zero uh, vector coefficients, all the coefficients equal to zero, right? And then um, we will build the functional data object 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 using these zero coefficients. So basically, it's a zero function, right? Okay. So after we build this. Um, we need also to build the, uh, build the beta of t. So we need to give the informations on the basic functions to expand the beta of t. So here we using, um, for beta of t we want to make it smooth. So therefore here we only using eleven free basic functions. Um, so. So this is the beta of t. So here we have uh, um, five five uh, functional coefficients. So which uh, including the mu of t, alpha one of t, alpha two of t, to alpha four of t, right? Yes. So this is the we have five basis uh, functional coefficient to estimate. So so this p is equal to five. So we have this uh, list of these uh, 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 functional co coefficients. Okay. So then we were using the uh, the function f regress. So the response is the temperature curve, right? And the uh, covariates, the scalar covariates, will be the uh, five columns, and and each column. Uh, represent the first column will always equal to one, and the next column will be the um, equal to one belong to the Atlantic regions and so on, and so this one beta list is is also a list of five um, functional coefficients, and uh, here it uh, it uh, contains the information for the uh, basic function you want to use to represent the uh, the beta of t here. Okay, so. So we run this uh, um, f regress. So in this case, it's also called a uh, functional ANOVA. Okay, so now you got this uh, estimation, and then you can extract the estimated functional coefficients and the fitted values um, from the result. <coughs> So, so this is uh, this is uh, the 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 results, um, and uh, so the first one represents the overall mean curve, right? Uh, this is uh, mu of t, right? Yes. Okay. So this is uh, this is the this is uh, the 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 yeah um, different from showing in my slides. I guess I made a mistake there. I don't know why. So uh, this is the overall mean curve. This is the mu of t, right? And so this one will be the alpha one of t. This represents the the difference of Atlantic region compared to the Canada average uh, temperature. And you can see here generally the Atlantic will have a higher temperature than Canada average, right? Um, so. Uh, And for the uh, continent, the second, the third panel represented the difference between the continental regions uh, to the Canada average. So 
uh, you can see here for the continental regions, it had a high temperature in the summer and a cold temperature in the winter, right? Because the continental has a bigger uh, temperature change between the winter and the summer. And for the uh, Pacific regions, this represents the Pacific regional effect. So you can see here um, the, the difference is always uh, greater than zero, means the Pacific uh, regions has a, a warm climate temperature than Canada average, right, overall. Especially in the winter, the, it can be um, like around 14 degree higher than the average uh, 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 Canadian temperature. Okay, and this represented the uh, effect of Arctic, and uh, and not surprisingly, uh, this Arctic is so that all this Arctic effect is 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 a negative. So it means the Arctic is a uh, is colder than uh, average um, Canadian temperature um, on, on on the whole whole year, right? Okay, so this is the the results. And then we can test for the effect of the climate uh, um, zones. Uh, so, uh, so there's a, a one function called uh, f permu dot f d. So this is uh, um, the argument will be the same as the f regress. Basically, you give the the function response temperature curves and the covariance regional list and the um, basic function you used to estimate the beta of t, right? And then this function we are doing the permutation test for you automatically. It will return the, um, let's see, it, it will return the the, uh, the residuals um, for each uh, permutation um, permutation of the response. Okay, so the the only drawback for this permutation test is that uh, the computation compute computing time is is uh, is relatively long. So, but it's thirty nine for this case, right? Uh, not not bad. Um, yeah. Okay, so it, uh, we got the results. Um, so, so here um, we can plot the uh, the result on the permutation test. This is the uh, graph I show you. Um, uh, in in our lectures, right? Okay. Um. Yes. Any questions?